Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here for the very first time, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah and on this channel, I post a lot of content about anti-MLM. I upload new videos every week. My cat is oftentimes making appearances in those videos. Really didn't take him that long to make an appearance this time. And I upload new videos every single week, so I would love it if you would consider subscribing and sticking around. Today's video feels like a huge one for me because this is my first video back after maternity leave. Every single video you've seen for the past two months has been pre-filmed, pre -filmed, pre scheduled and gone live while I've been off doing my own thing, having a baby. <laughs> You're gonna see this video in June and I haven't filmed anything since March. You've been seeing videos since March, but I haven't really been doing anything for YouTube since then. I've been totally taking a break. I feel so fortunate that the nature of this job allowed me to really do all that work upfront beforehand and then be able to completely check out for like two months, <laughs> go have a baby and give myself the time and space to adjust to new motherhood, which has been the biggest adjustment of my life, as I'm sure you can imagine. It has been a lot more stress, more sleep deprivation, more exhaustion, more overwhelm than I ever knew was possible, but also more joy, more love than I ever knew was possible. So I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you if you have been supporting my channel and watching those videos go live the past couple months while I've been away. I am so, so grateful. This literally could not be my job without your support, and I recognize that every single day. Thank you. And with that being said, I'm so excited to be back filming today. I'm wearing real clothes. I actually did my hair. I actually put on some makeup. I actually feel like myself again for once. I have been deep in the newborn trenches. I very rarely change out of my pajamas. I very rarely have clean hair. And it's very rare that I find time within my day to do things that help me feel more like me. And YouTube is my way to do that. So I'm so happy to be back. Yes, this is work. Yes, this is my job, but it's also something that I love doing doing. I'm so happy to be here and let's see if we can get this video filmed in one take before the milk monster wakes up for her nap. I'm not feeling hopeful, <laughs> but we're gonna try, so let's do it. Before we get into the video today, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that is reimagining the way we discover, shop for, and experience new fragrances. With Scentbird, you get to choose a new designer fragrance every single month for only $17. Every month, you get to pick which fragrances you want to receive, so there's no surprises. You are in complete control control here. And I was just thinking back, I've been working with Scentbird for over a year at this point, and chances are that if you've been around for a while and you've watched a lot of my videos, you've heard me rave about Scentbird. You know how much I love them. I've found so many new designer fragrances that I wouldn't have otherwise tried. The price point is super reasonable. They come in a generous 30-day supply. The packaging is genius. It comes in a magnetic case. There's a locking feature, so they're really easy to take with you on the go. But it dawned on me that all this time I've been telling you about their perfumes, but I haven't taken the opportunity to highlight how Scentbird also has colognes and unisex fragrances as well. So this time I asked my husband AJ to take the quiz on the Scentbird website. And instead of picking out perfumes for me, like I usually do, we picked out colognes for him. The quiz is a perfect place to start if you're not sure what fragrance notes you like. Scentbird is gonna recommend you a few different fragrances, but you're not locked into those by any means. They're just recommendations. And for AJ, through the quiz, he determined he wanted something that was sophisticated, light, classic, and timeless and the three colognes that Scentbird recommended for him were By the Sea by Memoir Archives, Our Best Smeller by Grooming Lounge, and Sexual Steel by Michelle Germain. Those are the three that Scentbird suggested and we were like, cool, let's go with it. Let's see how accurate this quiz really is. Scentbird was on the money with these recommendations. All of them were fantastic, but both of our favorites was Sexual Steel. All the fragrances come with these description cards and for this one, it says that this is a cool, sharp opening of fresh ginger and velvety smooth bergamot gives way to a magnetic lavender spiked with with crushed black pepper. That's a whole lot of things that you don't think would really go together, but somehow they do. And overall, we're really happy with Scentbird's recommendations here. Actually, one of these, this one, By the Sea. This one is kind of unisex. I would honestly wear this myself. We can both kind of share this one if we want to. If you'd like to give Scentbird a try, you can head to the link in the description box below and use the code Hannah Alonzo at checkout. This is gonna give you 55% off your first month at Scentbird, meaning that you're gonna get a 30-day supply of a designer perfume or cologne loan for just over $7. Thanks again, Scentbird, for your continued support of the channel. Now let's get into it. 
Boy, do I have a doozy of a video for you today. We are coming back from maternity leave with a bang. This is actually a video topic I started working on a couple months ago before I went on my break, and I've been so excited to get back and finish it. I've been making anti-MLM videos for over a year and a half. I've seen a lot of ridiculous things, but this is the first time that I saw something so shocking and so problematic that I went as far as to report this rep to her own company. Enough is enough, okay? What I found was so gross that I couldn't not let her company know about it. And that's exactly what I'm here to share with you today. First, I'm gonna show you what I found, then I'm gonna tell you how I reported her, and then I'm gonna fill you in on what the company actually did about it. This video topic came to me in the way they sometimes do, where a viewer sends me something, presumably for like an MLM top fails video or something. Those are compilation style videos where I have multiple TikToks, Instagram reels, Instagram stories, live streams, photos, whatever. And they're pieced together in little segments for those videos, but every now and then, I'll come across something that is so shocking that I go down a rabbit hole. I look into that person a little more. I look into the situation a little bit more. I find more information that shocks me enough to warrant its own separate video. And that's exactly what happened here today. And what I found is a rep for the MLM company, Amari, who has made it her entire social media brand and identity and presence to promote the fact that Amari products have the ability to treat ADHD in children. The the bulk of the content that she creates and posts on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook all have to do with this claim that Amari products are the solution for you if you have a child with ADHD and she can be the one to sell it to you. This all came about because her young daughter has an ADHD diagnosis and she very much takes the angle of like, my daughter has ADHD and here's all of her struggles and here's how taking this Amari kids product is essentially helping or treating her ADHD symptoms. Her daughter is featured in an alarming number of these TikTok videos. She's seen dancing or acting out these little skits or like alongside her mom taking the supplements on camera, basically working as her mother's poster child for the supposed powers of Amari supplements. It's not uncommon for MLM reps to dedicate their entire social media presences to the promotion of these products and transforming themselves into the MLM girl who has tailored every single one of her posts into a sales pitch. But this particular rep takes it one step further into near child exploitation territory, right? By using her daughter's ADHD diagnosis to promote her MLM products to other vulnerable parents. It's actually disgusting. It makes my stomach turn. Super quickly, in case you're not aware of what Amari is or what they sell, this is a multi-level marketing company that calls themselves the mental wellness company and they sell supplements. Think drink mixes, pills, protein powders, that kind of thing. This company falls into the health and wellness category of MLMs, which let me tell you are a dime a dozen out here. <laughs> Supplements are one of the most common products that MLM companies will sell. And my theory is that's because the growth of MLM companies is largely reliant on recruitment and therefore largely reliant on personal testimony. Personal testimony is extremely powerful when it comes to the sale of things like supplements. If you can claim that this pill made you drop 20 pounds or this powder improves your mental clarity or this supplement cured your ADHD, that's powerful. That's compelling. It's not always accurate or truthful, but it's really intriguing. That kind of a claim is going to get people's attention, especially people who are struggling with whatever ailment it is that you are claiming your product has the ability to treat or cure. So in my opinion, Amari or the mental wellness company is one of the worst MLMs out there in terms of the predatory nature of its product range and the unfounded claims that the reps will make about those products. Because remember that in a lot of cases, these claims are not proven. They're not backed by research or evidence. They are born out of sheer testimony. These supplements aren't regulated, tested, or proven to actually work. Pretty much the only people saying that these products are wonderful and magical are those who benefit financially from selling them. Okay, remember that. So now you can see how a rep on social media claiming that Amari supplements can treat her kids ADHD is really problematic because it's misleading and the hope is that you can prey on other people's vulnerabilities struggling with the same thing so that you can make a quick buck off of those vulnerabilities. So if you're interested in learning more about Amari specifically as a company, I have an entire deep dive on them on my channel. I can link that below. That video goes into way more depth and detail about the inner workings of the company and the compensation plan and all that jazz. We go into great detail in that video 
about how Amari is one of the worst of the worst, in my opinion, of the MLM companies. But for this video, let's talk about how this rep in particular is portraying some of the worst of the worst behavior as far as product claims go, okay? So I think the best place to start is just to show you the first TikTok I was ever sent from this rep. And let me just pause quickly here to say that I will be keeping this person's identity anonymous, especially because her child is like the center of all of her content. And it's extra important to me that I respect that child's privacy. Just in general, I never share the faces or usernames of the people that I feature in my videos because at the end of the day, they are a victim of a pyramid scheme. They're also a perpetrator and that's the kind of behavior we're gonna call out. But simultaneously, they're also the victim of the scheme. And for our purposes, they're just serving as an example of the outrageous things that being in an MLM will make you do. I'm not here to shame and blame the individual person and to put her on blast. I'm here to make an example out of her words and actions within the context of the multi-level marketing industry. Okay, so now that we're clear on that, here's the very first TikTok I ever saw from her. This is a short TikTok video of the Amari rep and her daughter pouring a powdered drink packet directly into their mouths. It says ADHD pixie stick that helps kids and adults, normalizes dopamine and serotonin, decreases hyperactivity, mood regulation, and mental focus. And the caption says kids mood for the win, hashtag ADHD, hashtag ADHD life, mental health, ADHD awareness, kids with ADHD, nutrition coach, and die free. So the Amari product that she's talking about is called Kids Mood. It sells for $51.95 for a box of 30 packets. The idea is that you can either mix this powder with water and drink it, or in this case, they're calling it a quote ADHD pixie stick that they just shoot straight without any water and they let it dissolve in their mouths. The three key ingredients in Kids Mood are saffron, holy basil, and rosemary. Some of these product claims include normalizing serotonin and dopamine, lowering your stress hormones, provide calm to the body and mind, supports resilience to anxious feelings, supports mental focus, ease muscle discomfort, support the immune system, yada, yada, yada. Notice all the little asterisks here. That's because these claims have not been evaluated by the FDA and these products are quote, not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. What I'm noticing right off the bat here is that this Amari rep is making four specific health claims about the kids mood product. Three of them match up to what Amari says on their website, which is that it normalizes dopamine and serotonin, mood regulation, and mental focus, okay? But nowhere on the Amari site does this product claim to, quote, decrease hyperactivity. Hyperactivity is one of the symptoms of ADHD, which stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And here she's claiming that the kids' mood supplement is a, quote, ADHD pixie stick that can decrease hyperactivity, even though Amari doesn't make those claims on their own website. One thing I was able to find on the Amari website is this document that shows the results from a pilot clinical trial of the kids mood product on 10 children. It says that in all 10 children, they saw an improvement in quote, focus, attention, mood, listening, tension, and irritation, as well as performance measures associated with schoolwork, math, reading, writing, and social relationships. Sounds great, right? I have a couple of concerns though. First of all, this trial says nothing about ADHD specifically, like this rep is claiming. The results do not state that kids mood treats ADHD. Secondly, 10 children is an extremely low sample size for a clinical trial. Ideally, we would wanna see a sample size of hundreds, if not thousands, in order for the results of that trial to be statistically significant. And finally, these results were based solely on surveys, which is not always a credible source of information. With a survey, you have to assume that the participants are being completely accurate and truthful with their responses, which may not always be the case intentionally or unintentionally. So to me personally, granted, I'm not a professional in interpreting clinical trial data or anything, but this doesn't strike me as a particularly solid study. I feel like a lot larger, more controlled studies would have to be conducted in order to really conclude that the kids' mood product does actually do these things that they're claiming. And what's even more interesting is that here at the top, it says, quote, the information may contain specific product claims or conclusions that are prohibited from being used for promotional or marketing purposes for nutritional supplements. Using product claims for marketing purposes that suggest an Amari product will diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent a disease is a violation of Amari policies and federal regulations. So there you go. Even this dinky little study that supposedly concludes that the kids mood product improves things like focus, attention, and mood, the reps are not allowed to be citing that study to promote the product anyway. In other words, this rep is in direct violation of Amari's policies by claiming that kids mood treats ADHD. So this is the point where I'm like, wow, this is really messed up 
up. Let me go to her TikTok account and see if this is just a one-off video of hers or if this is a trend on her account. Sure enough, it's a trend. It is her entire personal brand, in fact. Nearly every single thing she posts is exactly like this. It's featuring her daughter, it's talking about ADHD, and it's promoting the Pixie Stick product that she wants you to be interested in and buy from her, and it works. Here's some of the comments that she got on that video. There are so many comments just like this, asking what natural supplement she's using, people saying that they're interested. This one says, I love info. My son is on Ritalin and I would like to take him off of it and onto something natural. This other person says, what is it? I am desperate to try non-medication methods. Quote, desperate. The audience that she's trying to target is super clear and it's working. The idea here is to make an outrageous, eye-catching, predatory claim about what your MLM product can do and then wait for people to take interest and inquire about it. This video was originally posted to TikTok but was then reposted to Facebook and on Facebook it has 2 million views and nearly 6,000 comments. This is not just a harmless video posted by an MLM hun, this is widespread misinformation. We have a serious problem here. When I first came across the Samari rep, it was way back in February and I took a ton of screenshots and screen recordings of the problematic things that I saw on her social media profiles. So firstly, here's her TikTok account. She has 41,000 followers and her bio says mental wellness ADHD protocol with an emoji pointing down to her link. If you click the link, it takes to this landing page and it says the leading mental wellness revolution with links to things called quote adult ADHD and kids ADHD. If you click on on the adult link, it takes you here. It says you are shopping with blank and it gives you her name. So you know, she's getting credit for this sale and it gives you a preloaded cart with Amari's happy mind pack. When you click on the kids ADHD link, it takes you here. Another preloaded cart with the kids mood product, AKA that pixie stick that she keeps promoting. So the connection is very clear on her TikTok account, right? She wants people to see her TikToks, become intrigued by those claims, go to her bio, click that link that takes you to the products with the ADHD protocol, it sends you directly to her personal Amari webpage where she's going to get a commission off of all of those sales. Super messed up. And here's some more examples that I found on her social media profiles. Keep in mind, there are hundreds of these kinds of videos. I would literally be here all day long if I tried to show you every single one of them. So I'm not going to do that. But here's a few of the worst of the worst that I found. This one says why we don't have to medicate. Does your child struggle with focus, mood and impulse behavior? Do do you feel uncomfortable with medication at such a young age or not like the side effects? Natural supplements that help with mood, focus, impulse behavior, hyperactivity, motivation. It's keeping our 10 year old off meds. Link in bio. And her caption says, we were about to turn to medication before we found these. This TikTok video literally claims that thanks to Amari supplements, her 10 year old doesn't need medication for her ADHD. She's pitching these pyramid scheme products as a way to avoid actual tested proof proven medication. The purpose here is to give a parent of a child with ADHD the impression that if they buy these Amari products from her, their child will be treated and there just won't be a need for actual medication, all in the name of making money in her pyramid scheme. It's absolute idiocracy. This is dangerous because what she's claiming doesn't have any merit to it. This is just her own personal testimony and what she feels the results have been within her own child. This is just a woman making a video in her kitchen and writing whatever she wants on it and then posting it on the internet. Anyone can say whatever they want on the internet and it's up to us, the viewer, to distinguish between fact and fiction. But unfortunately, when a person is especially vulnerable to hearing whatever that bogus claim is, let's say a parent of a child with ADHD, it's much more difficult for them to be able to differentiate between fact and fiction because to a certain degree, people are gonna wanna believe so badly that what they're seeing here is true. You mean that I can place an order for an all natural supplement that's going to arrive to my door next week without a prescription that's going to treat my kids ADHD as well as medication would? If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Here's another one. It says, we found a natural way to help my daughter's ADHD. And then she says it again with more emphasis. It says, no scary side effects, no changed personalities, no long-term effects, and it works. It's so crystal clear which audience she's trying to reach. Look at these hashtags. ADHD, ADHD TikTok, ADHD moms, kids with ADHD, gut health, holistic health. People typing these keywords into the search bar of TikTok are gonna come across her videos because she's tagged them that way. She wants these parents who are looking
looking for a holistic solution to be able to come across her videos specifically in the hopes that they're going to buy into whatever she's selling, right? That is the goal. Targeting a specific audience here is very, very intentional. Here's another one. It says ADHD kids cocktail. This entire video is her daughter mixing together different products in an Amari cup. The products are displayed very proudly. The brand is displayed very proudly. The term ADHD is displayed proudly as well. And my issue with this one specifically is that this child is being roped into mommy's sales pitch, likely without the full understanding of what it is that she's actually doing. This very much gives off the whole using your child and exploiting their health issues for your own financial gain kind of vibes. Really don't love that because here she is filming her daughter, broadcasting her diagnosis on social media and exploiting that diagnosis all in the name of selling a product and making some money off of it. That is sick, okay? And this child is 10 years old. Maybe the argument could be made that she's old enough to be able to consent to being filmed, but honestly, I really don't think so. I don't think that she's making informed consent about what she's doing. Maybe in this moment, her understanding is that mom gives her these products every day and it's kind of fun to mix them together and it tastes really good and it's cool if mom films me doing this, but I'm of the opinion that a 10 year old does not have a full understanding of the scope of social media and that this video of her is being shown to 41,000 followers on TikTok so that mom can promote her MLM product to take advantage of other vulnerable parents. Some adults can't even put that together to see how problematic that is, let alone a 10 year old. Who knows, maybe one day this child will come to learn about how MLMs operate and the slimy sales tactics and she's gonna have to realize in retrospect that she was a part of that. Her mom is continually filming her and making the entire world aware of her ADHD diagnosis and then exploiting that to make a buck. What a sickening feeling that must be for her one day if she ever comes to look back on that and realize that. That breaks my heart and this is so not okay. In this video, her daughter's not actually in it, but she's still the subject of the matter. It says natural products we give our daughter that help her ADHD. Mood is a mood regulator, Edge is a brain booster, fundamentals for gut health, and Vita G for immune booster. So even though her kid's face isn't in this one, her mom is still saying, hey, my daughter has ADHD and here's four products that I can sell you. Sometimes MLM reps will intentionally be really shady about what company they're with or what the product is that they're selling. And they can tend to be really vague about their secret magical products. But in this case, she is almost shockingly explicit in her TikToks. She's like, here's the name of the products. Here's the claim I'm making. Here's all my ADHD hashtags so you know exactly exactly who I'm targeting. And I'm going to say all of that while wearing a hat with my company's name on it. She's not even trying to be sneaky about the fact that she wants you to draw the conclusion that Amari treats ADHD. Those are all the examples I'm going to show you. That was only five. Keep in mind, there are hundreds, literally hundreds of videos exactly like this. And knowing what I know about the policies and procedures of MLM companies, I knew immediately that these videos are direct violations. They have to be. MLM companies that sell health and wellness products always have clauses in their policies and procedures stating that their reps may not make unfounded health claims. They have to do that to cover their butts legally, right? If someone tries to sue the company for not following through on their product's promises, the company can go, hey, 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 that's not our fault. We told the reps in our policies that they're not allowed to make those claims. It's not our fault. We can't be held responsible. I looked up the Amari policies and procedures, which are linked below, and I found two clauses that she is in direct violation of. The first one is section 6.1C that states that wellness partners cannot claim that Amari products treat, cure, or prevent any ailment or disease. And the second one is section 6.1D that states wellness partners can't compare Amari products to actual drugs that are used to treat specific diseases and conditions, which she does over and over again. She says that the kid's mood product is an alternative to ADHD medication, which funny enough, here's another video in which Amari's own chief science officer, Sean Talbot, is in direct violation of this policy himself. And have been shown in certain clinical trials to be good for mood, helps teenagers and kids um, as effectively as something like Prozac in terms of overall mood improvement. It helps postmenopausal women with sleep difficulties, right? So there's a benefit there. But re- where it really, really shines is in its ability to help you focus. It's been shown in clinical trials to be equivalent to methylphenidate, which is Ritalin, right? So Ritalin is methylphenidate. Um, Adderall is a sort of a um, slow release version of methylphenidate. So if you could take something that is natural, basically a little pixie stick, this is a, 
what we call a direct to mouth powder. You rip it open, you dump it in your mouth. It it tastes like sugar. It's there's there's no sugar here. It's 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 um it's sugar free. It tastes like fruit punch, right? It's a it's a fruit flavored blend. Um, and to be able to do that and get something naturally from these spices that is effective as a really hardcore stimulant kind of a drug, I think a lot of people would try this and see if this gives them the benefit that they're looking for. Again, just to drive this home, let's go back to the policies and procedures, why don't we? Drug claims shall not be made when describing Amari Global products. These products should never be compared to drug products utilized to treat specific diseases or conditions. He literally just claimed that the Kids Mood product is as effective as Prozac, Ritalin, and Adderall. What happened to the company policy of not comparing their products to actual drugs? That doesn't apply to the chief science officer? What happened to the policy of not citing the conclusions of these studies? when marketing Amari products. Does that not apply to him either? What's happening in this video is Amari reps are listening to this higher up in the company make these product claims. It looks like this is maybe on a Zoom call training or something. And now they're taking that and they are screen recording it and they're reposting it and running with those claims, even though they're against company policy. And the consequences for violating these policies could result in you getting a warning, being fined, being suspended, losing all of your bonuses, having your team taken away from you, or being turned terminated completely. So I knew that we've got all kinds of policy violations going on here. And I have this wealth of evidence that this rep is going against policy time and time again. And it sort of felt like crap. I was made aware of this person's actions. Now I have to do something about it. Like it fell on my lap. It fell on my desk. I felt like I couldn't just be given this information and not do something about it. If I was going to take this person's TikTok videos and feature them in my own video and talk about how it's a violation and talk about how they could be reported for that. I felt like I kind of needed to practice what I preach, right? And I never broadcast the identity or the usernames of the people in my videos, so no one knows who she is but me. I have all of the evidence here within my possession. I'm obviously not going to broadcast that out to the world here in my video to protect her privacy, so if it's anybody's responsibility to report her, it's mine. And to be clear, my goal here wasn't to like get her terminated and ruin her life or anything like that. Absolutely not. But I felt like at the very least, the company needed to be aware that they have this rep out here making it their entire personal brand to promote how Amari treats this condition and how this company's products can be used as an alternative to ADHD medication. So my next step was to figure out how do you report someone? Section 18.1 of the policy states that if one wellness partner wants to report another wellness partner, they must do so via a written letter because emails are not accepted. This letter must contain the nature of the violation, specific facts to support the allegations, the dates that these occurred, the number of occurrences, the people involved, and supporting documentation. And from there, Amari will review it and take disciplinary action if necessary. There's a couple things about this that I want to note because I think they're significant. The first is the wording that specifically states, if one wellness partner wants to report another wellness partner, okay, um, I'm not a wellness partner. I'm not affiliated with the company at all. I'm simply an observer of her actions on social media. And I think it's kind of interesting because it's giving off the vibe that you kind of have to be a rep in order to report another rep. Almost like maybe they won't accept reports coming from people outside the company or something. And if that's the case, that's very problematic that the only reports they're willing to consider are coming from people on the inside. Because <laughs> remember that these policy violations are playing out on social media for the entire world to see. Why does it feel like only people within the company are allowed to be the ones to call it out? I think the wording about well wellness partner reporting another wellness partner is very strange. The second significant thing is that they do not accept reports by email. They only accept reports written in letter format, mailed directly to the corporate office. This strikes me as we're going to make this as inconvenient as humanly possible to hopefully deter people from submitting reports. That's genuinely how this feels. Because who's really going to take the time to write out a physical letter, look up the company's corporate address, and then send it to them via snail mail? I mean, I did. I took the time to do that, but I would venture to say that most people probably wouldn't. They would look up how to report someone, they would see that it's a lot of work, and they'd probably go, eh, it's not worth it. Not accepting email reports feels to me like an intentional deterrent. It almost feels like they're hoping to limit the number of reports they receive by specifying that only wellness partners can report other wellness partners and by making it as inconvenient as possible to do so. So here I am, somebody outside the company, being asked to compose and mail a very detailed detailed letter to the company if I want to report this rep. 
Challenge accepted. Here's the letter that I typed, printed out, and mailed. To whom it may concern, I am writing to anonymously report a policy violation committed by Amari Wellness Partner blank. I was also able to find her wellness partner ID number, so I included that as well, who has posted several pieces of content on her social media accounts suggesting that Amari products can treat ADHD. Evidence, links, and dates are included in the following pages. The evidence included in this letter is not all-inclusive. The number of violations are innumerable among all of blank's social media platforms, hundreds of videos in total. I have included evidence of five specific examples in the following pages, but there are many more violations on her social media platforms that deserve to be investigated as well. Then I copied and pasted both of those sections from the policies and procedures that she's in direct violation of that we already talked about. Most of these policy violations have originated on her TikTok account, but she also appears to repost many of her TikTok videos onto other social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram. And I included all of her handles and direct links to all of her social media. These claims that Amari products are able to treat ADHD directly violate the company's policy. I feel that these claims made by blank deserve to be brought to the company's attention because they damage the company's integrity. And it's my hope that this wellness partner is held accountable for her misleading social media posts. Thank you, anonymous. So at this point, I'm just kind of hoping for the best that they will accept an anonymous letter and that I don't have to identify myself as an Amari wellness partner in order for this report to be taken seriously. I included five more pages with this letter and it's everything that you've already already seen in this video. Basically take this video and put it down on paper. That's the evidence that I gave them. The first two pages are intended to show that her bio says ADHD protocol and to show that the link takes them directly to her Amari webpage with these pre-filled carts of Amari products. I wanted to make that connection really, really clear where it's like, here's her social media account. Here's the link that she gives you in her bio. She's claiming that she has an ADHD protocol to sell you and it takes you directly to her Amari website with these carts full of Amari products. And the last three pages of my letter show screenshots of the TikTok videos that I already showed you in this video. I made sure that the screenshots were large and clear and that they included her username and they showed her captions with all the ADHD related hashtags. I also put a bit of my own text below each screenshot, giving them the exact link to the video, the date that it was posted and a brief description of why it was being reported. Basically, I did my absolute best to be as clear as possible and give them all the information that I thought that they would need. Who this person person is, her Amari ID number, the links and the usernames to her social platforms, several examples, links to the content itself, and a brief explanation as to why I think that it's a policy violation. I wanted to ensure that whoever was on the receiving end of this letter did not have the excuse of saying, oh, this isn't enough evidence or something like that. The next thing I did was I looked up the address for the Amari corporate office. It says that it's in Irvine, California. And it was really important to me that I didn't put this in just a normal letter envelope with a stamp. I actually paid for a shipping label and I put it in a priority mail envelope. You can see here that Amari's corporate address is the address it's going to. And I put my own personal PO box as the return address. I didn't give a name attached to that PO box so that I could still stay anonymous in this case. But the purpose in doing this is so that I was able to have a tracking number so that I could make sure that it arrived to its destination and that the company couldn't say that they never received it. Just to cover all my bases, I filmed myself putting the letter into the envelope, taping the shipping label on, and putting it into the drop box at my post office. I put it into the mail on February 22nd, and as you can see, it was in USPS possession on this date. Then it shows that it was out for delivery to this Irvine, California address that I put on the shipping label on February 24th, but then it was forwarded to Lehigh, Utah, and is marked as delivered on February 27th. I don't really know what this is all about, this whole forwarding to Utah thing. I'm figuring that perhaps Amari has an office in Utah. That would make sense to me. A lot of MLM companies have offices in Utah. It feels like the MLM capital of the US. And with a quick Google search, I was able to find a couple connections to Lehigh. Maybe there's this one Lehigh address listed for Amari on the website Glassdoor. Here's another web page in which the chief science officer, Sean Talbot, that we saw earlier, he hosted an Amari event in Lehigh. Lehigh once. There's also this other event that took place in Lehigh. It says Amari Utah launch and the event was hosted at a Hilton hotel. So what I'm trying to say is that it could be reasonable to assume that there is an Amari office in Lehigh, Utah, even though when you Google the
the corporate office address. It gives you the Irvine, California one, but I'm not really surprised to see that it was forwarded to an address in Utah. I think it's still safe to assume that it did end up in Amari's hands. Once I had confirmation that my letter was delivered, now it's time to wait and watch and see if the company does anything about it. The company has all the information they need. The policy violations are explicitly clear. What are they going to do? How are they going to hold this rep accountable for exploiting her kid's ADHD and claiming that Amari products can treat it? I gave it a couple weeks and I checked back in with this rep's TikTok account on March 16th, which was 17 days after my letter shows that it was delivered to the company. And I noticed a few really interesting things. The first thing is that the words ADHD protocol were completely removed from her bio. The second thing is that when you click on her link, now none of those links explicitly say ADHD. If you click on those links, they still take you to the same carts with the same Amari products, but now they're just labeled as kids focus and mood and adult focus and mood. And there's no mention of the term ADHD specifically. And the third thing I noticed is that now she's no longer using ADHD related hashtags. So before it was things like ADHD, kids with ADHD, ADHD and women, that kind of thing. Now these days she's only using more vague hashtags like natural remedy, hyperactive, anxious kids, emotional teen, and happy kids. Personally, I think that these are too many coincidences to be coincidences. She clearly has distanced herself from mentioning ADHD directly by name. And I have to assume that she likely didn't make that choice on her own. I don't think she woke up one day a couple weeks after being reported and just thought, you know, this is wrong. I should stop doing this. <laughs> I have to stop claiming that my pyramid scheme supplements can treat ADHD in kids. No, not a chance. It's not a coincidence, in my opinion. I think it is far more likely that she was contacted by the company and told to knock it off, which I think is great. It appears to me from the outside that maybe she got a slap on the wrist or a warning and the company was like, hey, you have to cut it out with this ADHD thing. That's so not allowed. And we may never know if there were more serious disciplinary actions taken like a fine or a suspension. And honestly, that's fine. We don't need to know. It would not bring me satisfaction to know that she was seriously punished or something. Like I said, I'm not trying to ruin her life or anything with this. That's never the goal here. But it does bring me satisfaction to see that she's gotten rid of that practice of slapping the term ADHD on everything she posts. It's not written out in her TikToks anymore. She doesn't use ADHD related hashtags anymore. Her bio doesn't use the term ADHD protocol to sell you something. Those are all good things. And I think in that regard, reporting her was successful. However, that does not mean that the issue is resolved. Far from it, actually. She has not stopped implying that Amari products can treat ADHD. She's just not being explicit about it anymore. Here's a screenshot of her TikTok at this very moment, three months after being reported. Every single TikTok is a promotion of the Amari Kids Mood product. She is still filming her children. She is still using them for content and showing them taking kids mood. She's even putting this big, bold red text with these stop signs on it that says parent hack or parent stop to clearly get the attention of parents who have children with ADHD. She can't reach them with these hashtags anymore, but she's still trying her hardest to get their attention and implying that their kids can benefit from these products. Additionally, none of her old videos in which she does mention ADHD have been deleted. You can still find all of the videos that I reported on her account today. They have not been taken down. They have not been modified. The captions haven't changed. The hashtags haven't changed either. So it doesn't appear that the company required her to remove the non-compliant content. They just required her to change her behavior going forward, which I think is really interesting, right? I gave them five specific examples with all of the links and it doesn't appear at least that the company made her take those down. They're not making her go back and retroactively take care of the issue by deleting or correcting her old TikToks. It was sort of like, okay, from this point forward, here's how you need to be acting. You can't be mentioning ADHD anymore. Basically, the behavior is not corrected. <laughs> she's still exploiting her kids. She's still behaving in a way that's very gross and very predatory. She hasn't stopped this behavior. It doesn't feel like she understands that what she's doing was wrong because instead of ceasing that behavior altogether, she's just evolved in an attempt to stay within compliance, which is kind of the perfect symbolism for MLMs as a whole, as an industry, right? Pyramid schemes are illegal. So what MLMs do is they still behave and operate like pyramid schemes, but they just tweak their policies and their comp plans ever so slightly to ride that line of legality so that there may not be enough evidence against them to actually take them down. That is exactly 
exactly what is happening here with this rep. And with that, that's all I have to show you for this video today. And I would love to know your thoughts down below. I just want to reiterate one more time that my goal with this video was not to put this particular person on blast. And it also wasn't to take her down personally by reporting her. The goal was to use her as an example of how scammy, gross, and predatory these business tactics are, and to essentially try and hold her accountable for her actions and run an experiment to see if the company would do anything about it if given the information. So let me know what you think below. Do you think it was a coincidence that her behavior changed slightly a couple weeks after being reported? If it wasn't a coincidence, do you think the company just gave her a warning? Do you think a warning was sufficient? Do you think the company should have done more? Because personally, the conclusions that I'm kind of taking away from this whole experience is that people will say whatever they want on social media in order to make a sale. There's no shame. There's no remorse. There's no guilt there. She clearly has no issue with what she's doing and she doesn't understand how it's wrong. That's the first conclusion I've come to. And the second conclusion is that even if you go through all of the trouble to report somebody to their company for obvious policy violations, it doesn't feel like the company's really going to do much about it, which is incredibly disheartening. I think in some ways this was a success because moving forward, she's not going to be addressing ADHD specifically in her social media posts, which is great. However, it seems like the company didn't really take these policy violations seriously enough to truly prevent this rep from making this kind of claim. Because like I already said, she hasn't really stopped claiming that these products can treat ADHD in kids. She's just being sneakier about it now. And with that, my friends, it's all I have for you today. Thanks again to Semper for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out the link in the description box below and use the code Hannah Alonzo at checkout to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.